This video is sponsored by MacPaw, makers of Clean My Mac X. What's going on everybody, Ian here for Cult of Mac. And now that WWDC is coming to a close and we've had a chance to get our hands on iOS 14 and iPad OS 14, I thought I'd share with you guys some of the things that Apple added to the OSs, at least in these early beta stages, that they didn't tell us about on stage. Now, first up on the list is one that I've seen a lot of people really excited about on Twitter, and it's the back tap feature. This is an accessibility setting under accessibility and then touch, and then all the way down at the bottom, you have this back tap option. And basically what it does is allows you to tap on the back of your device two times or three times to enable different features. And you can do things like make it quicker to get to notification center or control center, activate reachability, or even execute a shortcut, which means you could actually run different types of automation or different types of processes by simply tapping on the back of your device. And the way it works is absolutely fascinating. Basically, it's using the accelerometers in your device to sense when you've tapped on the back of your device two times or three times to then activate whatever feature you've selected. It's super cool and definitely adds a layer of convenience for things like getting to notification center or control center, or even activating reachability to bring the top edge of the screen down without having to try to fiddle with swiping right on the edge or stretching your thumb all the way to the top corner. Another thing I found absolutely fascinating in iOS 14 is the ability to use the hearing control center widget to actually see the level of the audio playing in your AirPods or Beats headphones. Now this is something that kind of plays into Apple's whole hearing protection and hearing health, much like the noise app on the Apple Watch. Now you can actually have it tell you how loud the music is playing in your headphones to help keep your ears safe. Now next up is a feature that we actually saw previewed last year in iOS 13's betas, and it disappeared before the final release, but it's now back again in iOS 14's betas, so who knows if it'll make it to the final release, but it's the FaceTime eye contact feature. Now, unfortunately, this feature is only on the iPhones, not on the iPads and not on iPad OS, which means if you're using your iPad for FaceTime calls, you're definitely still gonna be looking at the center of the screen with the camera way off to the side, which makes it look like you're completely ignoring the conversation that's happening. Whereas on the phone, it will work because it'll be right at the top and it's just adjusting your eyes a slight bit. Now, the next feature of iOS that Apple didn't really make clear, I guess, in the keynote, but it's something that I found absolutely fascinating is the ability to create stacked widgets other than their smart stack which basically means if you have widgets either in the widget screen or on your home screen, you can pile a bunch of different widgets up together so they're all in one space, but you can quickly cycle through them just with a quick flick of your thumb, allowing you to have several different quick action things in one spot. Then you can turn on whether or not you want it to be a smart stack or just a standard stack that allows you to scroll through it manually. If it's a smart stack, it'll automatically try to surface the relevant thing for the time of day, but a lot of times for something like a stack of shortcuts or a stack of notes, what you really just want is a bunch of shortcut buttons to the things you might need depending on the situation. Now, another feature of iOS 14 that'll be really great for the photography nerds is the ability to set a manual exposure override, which basically means that if you want a picture to always be a little bit underexposed or a little bit overexposed, you can actually set that in the camera app on your device, meaning that you don't have to manually readjust the exposure after you take each picture. Instead, if you want every picture you take to be a little bit underexposed, you set that overall exposure override down you know, one or two stops, and then when you take your picture, they'll all be a little underexposed. So it'll actually adjust the auto exposure so it'll still set its level correctly, but then compensate with the negative number of stops or positive number of stops you need in your photo to make it easier to get slightly darker or slightly brighter photos. Another feature I'm absolutely excited about in iOS 14 is music autoplay. And the idea here is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you use Spotify before, it's had autoplay for a long time. And the idea is that when you finish listening to the album, the playlist, the song, whatever it is that you've chosen to listen to, it will automatically play things similar to that so that you never end up in a situation where you were listening to something and then find yourself listening to nothing. With autoplay in iOS 14 in the music app, you get a little infinite sign, which basically you tap that, and whatever you're listening to, once that music is done, it will play things like the music you were just listening to, so you can continue to enjoy music all day long. But the final feature that I want to touch on in this is the changes to the weather app in iOS 14. But before we get to that, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, Clean My Mac X from MacPaw. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one utility that takes care of your Mac's health. It's a Mac OS cleaner, a performance monitor, and a malware remover. And with Big Sur coming out this fall, Clean My Mac X is the perfect tool to clean up the junk on your computer to prepare it for the new version of Mac OS. On top of freeing up storage space, Clean My Mac X can also free up RAM to maximize your Mac's performance. Whether you're looking to win back some storage space, improve your Mac speed, or keep your system malware free, Clean My Mac X can help make your Mac feel like the day you bought it. 
You can get Clima Mac X on the Mac App Store or from MacPaw's website. Follow the link in the description to get a 30% discount. Terms and conditions apply. My thanks to MacPaw for sponsoring this video and Cult of Mac's WWDC coverage. And the final feature that I want to touch on, and this is by no means the only other feature Apple did announce, but the final one that I thought was worth highlighting is the new weather app and weather widgets. Apple didn't spend a lot of time talking about the weather app, but it's seen a lot of changes with iOS 14. With Apple purchasing Dark Sky earlier this year, weather app is getting a huge revamp in iOS 14 with a bunch of more useful information. Now, on top of having you know your daily forecast, your UV levels, your air quality, you'll also get minute by minute hyper-localized precipitation information, meaning that if it's starting to rain, you'll know when it's gonna be raining lightly versus raining really hard. Now, this is the kind of stuff that's really useful if you're out traveling or going out to exercise, knowing when it's going to be super heavy rain versus lighter rain or no rain at all, or maybe that there's rain coming in a little bit is really handy so you don't get stuck out in a rainstorm. So seeing Apple take the dark sky acquisition and roll those features directly into the OS has me really excited about the future of the weather app because I would hate to lose that functionality when dark sky inevitably goes away. So that pretty much wraps it up. A couple of the really big things that I'm excited about in iOS 14 that Apple didn't tell us about on stage, things that I'm really looking forward to coming later this year. Let me know if you guys have other things you want me to check out down in the comments. And uh, while you're at it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And until next time, I'm Ian for Cult of Mac. See you in the next one.